Welcome to Inform TV. I'm Alan Repke, Alexandria, Minnesota. Uh, today, this 19th day of June 2012, I'm going to try to get my act together after failing yesterday on about five takes of the subject matter I want to address today. And, and uh, it, it actually has become more of a threefold approach. Originally, I just wanted to talk about Greece and some Keynesian theory. And then in the news last night, uh, uh, we'll watch some things on the G20. And so today, as I try to be truly seeing that you're informed, I want to talk about a couple subjects. Uh, and the first is Greece is no longer a sovereign nation. And that needs to be front and center in the debate of our age of unenlightenment. The other is the subject matter that I want to talk on is the Keynesian theory age that has devastated this country and devastated world economics to the point where, as I talked about in one of my previous shows here of late, the fact the 1% has taken over 24% of the annual income in this country again, just like they did in 1928. And, uh, uh, what is going on with Greece, if we're finally going to show some leadership, we have to see that the Keynesian theory guys don't lead the debate or are the final outcome of starting to address the disastrous economic uh, position we find ourselves in in the 21st century. And uh, the other subject matter that maybe I was missing in my presentation yesterday or my failed presentations yesterday was the fact that I needed to take a look at what was currently going on. Because to really be informed, you have to know what's happening on a daily basis. And one of the things that I think is, has brought society to its knees, our financial uh, society, uh, it, it's a situation if we're not following current events. Uh, media is uh, covering garbage. They're covering human tragedies and natural events. But those aren't the items that are going to address the, the mess. Never have, never will. Yes, I'm interested in them at times. You're interested in them at times. But the reality is we always have to focus on the real meat and potatoes, as they say, of the day and what is really happening. And when I was looking at this area of sovereignty, and I hope you're looking at the background so you're thinking ahead a little bit, U.S. dollar for Greece I've got uh, uh, listed there, and we're, we're going to get into that. But the thing that caught my attention and my thought process in here and trying to show you that we have to have new leadership at the podium and not the failed past. And the thing that caught my eye the most was the G20 meeting. And one of the things that uh, was coming out of that in current news was two things, three things actually. One was uh, Obama's decision on um, illegal kids, immigrants, that they would get some form of uh, amnesty. Uh, the other was uh, Obama's 100 days on the golf course in his present presidency. And the other was Putin. Now, if I can remember my thought process here, the thing that came out in the news yesterday uh, about the G20 uh, meeting was Putin seemed frustrated. He seemed to have a mean look on his face. He was maybe like me, looking to have a mean, disgusting uh, disposition. And one cannot do anything but think that Putin must be sitting at that G20 summit in Mexico and going, what did I do coming back as president of Russia? 
when I could have just remained as prime minister, I could have fished, I could have drove my motorcycle, I was still controlling everything in Russia, uh, and probably could as long as I wanted to, and now I've moved back into this group of 20 idiots getting together uh, on a regular basis and yet not doing anything to address the mess. Now, am I a Putin fan? No. I mean, he's got uh, qualities, good qualities, but bad qualities that uh, we have to be very afraid of. And yet at the same time, he was betraying this incredible message to the world. People, we have idiots in charge. And I, I, and I can't help but think when he was sitting there in, in the photo op with the, uh, Obama, we happened to think now, what is this guy chasing a golf ball around um, the, the, the course for? Doesn't he realize he's, he's the leader of the free world? And, and back to the program when I said, you Democrats should send uh, the White House a copy of the American president. And one of the things in this whole process that uh, uh, caught my attention, what did he do in this one little bleep? He said, we're going to give amnesty to these immigrant kids that are basically Americans. They don't know any other lifestyle. They're educated in our schools. They view themselves as Americans. They speak English. Um, and he did it. And what's happening? Romney, the Republicans, are just in shock. They're saying he didn't have the right to do that. Yet the polls show immediately that 64% of the American people agreed with his decision. The American people didn't say, well, Congress should have done that. Well, Congress could have done that for since 2008, even before, but they didn't. And that was my whole point to the president. If he's going to be a leader, just plain lead. It's incredible how much backing you get. You don't have to follow, have your uh, uh, Secretary of Agriculture and all your cabinet members out flying the wings off the Obama corporate jets. All you have to do is tell them, stay in your office, bring cuts to me, bring revenue increases to me, and let's get this show on the road. And if he doesn't do that, what's our option? Now we're going to get Romney for four years to, to play with his Vin Weber boys, that uh, Vin Weber, the champion of the 1%? Or are we going to look outside the box for a person like uh, uh, Rex Tillerson, chairman of Exxon, that uh, recently just uh, sold a half trillion dollar deal to Putin, uh, knows every leader in the world, or at least every leader in the world that is, is worthwhile, and are we willing to bring in one of the ray of hopes outside the box as well that the media puts down as a wacko, and that's Mark Cuban, who talked this week about some very interesting views about our marketplace. And he basically went on to say that, that if we're going to have a stock market, we have to have stocks, publicly traded stocks, pay dividends. And we have to get our stock market away from a gambling casino, and we have to address high frequency trading. And you address it by simply eliminating it. And you can't have what was on the news today, a situation where we talk about our banking community and our trading community and our speculative community, a bondholder, the real king of bonds, they called him, uh, 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 Kessler was his, his name on CNBC today, who said, the banks are successfully buying 10-year treasuries that return one and a half percent or 1.6 percent over 10 years and by doing that the banks are getting a 15 percent return on equity just think of that so the voodoo economics that are dominating our society why isn't that front and center hooray cuban for bringing that forward and what was cuban really telling us that 
the push from Congress to get regulators in place to watch this is not a doable task. Why? Because our institutions, our churches, our, uh, our, our universities are not turning out people of substance that will actually watch their buddies. They all want to be like Greenspan. They want to be loved. They don't want to be like me. Prefer to be hated by all because if you're hated by all, you're surely doing something right. And traditionally, when I was a kid, they would say, well, what do you want to be? I want to be a leader when I grow up. I want, I want to be a person of substance. And many of the times, the people that nurtured me would say, why would you want to be that? Well, because you'll have money and you'll have influence, but you won't have any friends. They told me that, right? You want to go through life without any friends. Because if you stand for something, you're not going to be a liked person or a respected person, not in the 20, 21st century. Uh, we've moved away from the age of enlightenment. We're in a point in time where money is first, power is second, and it really doesn't matter how you get those two. As long as you focus with the niche, whether you're a country, uh, where you're a big individual, uh, that's what matters. But back to our other subject matter and, and the subject matter of Greece at hand, not just my frustration with uh, mankind and life and watching my fellow workers and fellow citizens not enjoying the, the American dream when truly we can and should have it. It's the 21st century, the age of gadgets and and uh, uh, advanced thought, right? Well, yes and no. Sovereignty. Now, the, 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 the point that I was making with Greece is we have the G20 meeting and okay, we're going to yield to the fact that the G20 are all sovereign nations. I'm not uh, in any manner, shape, or form saying that's a true statement, but I'll yield that We'll say we've got 20 sovereign nations meeting in Mexico this week. But the reality is Greece is no longer a sovereign nation. And why do I say that and why? I want you to bring that up in both uh, the local and national debate. What is sovereignty? Sovereignty is supremacy in rule or power. Power to govern without external control or forces the supreme political power in a state. Well, when we look at uh, uh, Greece here, they have a currency situation where they can't manage, and they have outside sources as well as inside sources that have destroyed their sovereignty, destroyed their economic well-beings. People, they're at the point where Russia and other forces are turning off their natural gas, their power. Uh, they are at the point of anarchy, of, of just total and complete disarray. And yet, the thing that bothers me more on this, let's look at just a little more on sovereignty to get you in the thought process. Sovereignty is the quali quality of having supreme independent authority over a geographic area such as a territory. It can be found in a power to rule and make law that rests on political fact for which no purely legal explanation can be provided in theoretical terms, the idea of sovereignty is basically a moral imperative, the entity exercising it. And here's, here's basically what it, for centuries, the pa uh, centuries past, the idea that a state can be a sovereign was always connected to its ability to guarantee the best interests of its own citizens. See my point here? Greece is no longer a sovereign nation. In fact, we've got tens of them uh, around uh, the country and around the world, I should say. Thus, if a state could not act in the best interest of its own citizens, it could not be thought of as a sovereign state, nor should be governing itself, is what it is really saying. So why aren't we looking at an alternative form of government 
for these ungovernable Greece, the center of democracy. The concept of sovereignty has been discussed throughout history from the time of the Roman era to the present day. It has changed in its definitions, concepts, and applications throughout, especially during the Age of Enlightenment when, when we were basically taught that morality and uh, when uh, leaders fail, the people have an election rather than going out with clubs and guns and, and killing each other. Uh, and our revolutionary forefathers really put that in what? True context where the election process that we're soon going to have is for what? It's for one reason, to bring some sanity back to governance. Sanity back to sovereign nations. And Obviously, here's what I'm talking about with Greece. Greece's situation is here, Greece must default on its Euro debt. Greece must stick its bondholders. Greece must stick its bank. Greece must stick the other countries in the Euro. And the United States must see that it happens because Greece is no longer a sovereign nation. It cannot deal with itself. Yet we cannot allow the de most despicable economic philosophy in the world to come in at this point in time of great crisis of a world at economic war without looking for people of substance to trade it out. And, and that's the Keynesian theory. And here's what the Keynesian theory would do with this disastrous mess that we have with Greece. They would see to it uh, uh, that they just kick the can down the road, or if it gets worse to the point where there is a default, the Keynesians manage it to the point where uh, the banks and the bondholders dump uh, their bad mistakes, their bad uh, investments to the nations with a super write down just like went on here in 2008 rather than let capitalistic economics play out and the people that made the mistakes take a you know what kicking, a big time you know what kicking. And we as the United States, and I always talk agriculture here as the best example that we as common citizens can think of. Now, many of the things in the farm crisis in 85 were not handled properly, but the outcome was what should happen with Greece and what should happen with our housing mess. And it was just the opposite of what Keynesian theory would have accomplished. Uh, we actually made a very strong rural America. We went back to real conservative terms, in fact, two conservative uh, economic terms, and we left uh, uh, the insanity of farm subsidies come into place rather than government do some right things through a commodity loan rate like sugar policy it had and do what the farmer or the nation uh, or the farmer couldn't do himself and that's to see that we only raised uh, the acres that we needed the rest was put in CRP and and the cheapest and best way to manage supply and yet at the same time what I'm getting at here is what happened in that farm crisis times the government rightfully so uh, decided that the farmer was never going to pay off this debt why? Because of what government policy did by lowering the price of, of the loan rate and the support rate for farmers by a third. And once they did that, there was no way in heck that the farmer could pay his debt. There was just no way. Yet the rest of the economy at the same time, the housing market was already starting this uh, uh, spiral upwards. Yet the David Stockmans, the Ronald Reagans that thought if you lower the price of grain you're going to make food cheaper. How incredibly foolish uh, these people were. But what I'm getting at here 
uh, when we have a bag of Doritos over here uh, that I'm not going to go out of the picture to pick it up that has a, a stamped on price, I believe, of uh, $4.99 that you can buy usually at the Target, the Walmarts, for about, uh, or Eldon's here in town, for about four bucks. Or um, when it's on sale, $3.48. But even with $6 corn, people, there's about 12 cents worth of corn in it. So it, it just shows how incredibly stupid our society has become. But anyway, what I'm getting at with the farm situation in 85, they followed the debt right down just as we need to do with Greece, all the way to the person that got stuck with this absorbent debt. In those days, it was high-priced farmland, uh, even though everything else was going up, that our government decided through, through their infinite stupidity that uh, uh, farm prices should be dropped by a third, yet farmers should continue to make their payments. And just not possible. But anyway, when it was all said and done, farms that were bought at $2,100 an acre, $3,000 an acre. The debt was written down to about 800 bucks. And the person that actually had that property was able to keep that piece of farmland with a new term debt and a new interest rate, which was, of course, much lower and had right of first refusal, rather than let the George Soros, the, um, uh, uh, the Donald Trumps and that kind of thing to come in and take everything over. In fact, that's why I'm bringing this up in relation to Greece. The United States needs to see that Greece defaults and we do not allow this Keynesian theory to work with Greece. We need to see that the banks there become liquidated, yet the citizens that have a house, have that taxi cab, have that small business, they end up with a debt under the new written down level. Then we're talking sovereignty as far as sovereignty and sound business is concerned. And from a standpoint of not in any manner, shape, or form allowing them to go back, was it the drachma? That's the name that comes before, but they're their old currency. No way do we allow these Keynesian theory clowns to come back and let them put a garbage currency in place and, and let the George Soros and the Donald Trump types come in. We need to stick every European bank over there and stick every bondholder and stick those governments such as Germany that were stupid enough to let this thing get out of control. And from a standpoint of the US, if Greece doesn't want to become part of another country over there, I'm seriously saying we should offer them a U.S. territory ship. We should offer them statehood. Uh, we, we are in a situation and we definitely say if you don't want to stick with the euro after you write all this garbage down, including to the point where your average citizen has the write down, then you use the U.S. dollar. And all these garbage currencies around the world are a thing of the past that we have to see that true economics come into play here. And we, we cannot allow these people of theories. We have to see that the haircut starts and send a shot over Europe that either Greece does it the right way or we're going to pull the plug, not on just Greece. And when I say pull the plug, we're not going to let any airline come into our airspace that services Greece. We're not going to give any visas for any tourist industry. And, and believe me, people, the only, and I've been to Greece, I think, a couple times, the only industry that's, uh, that ever was in the economy was a tourist industry there in Greece. And Greece is the fuse that we're going to light for economic reality, that sovereign policy, sovereign economics is going to come into place. And if you don't, we're going to take 
the same approach to Spain, to Italy, and so on around the world. We have to let sound capitalistic economics play out for good or bad, whether it affects you, me, or the next guy. But leadership is an incredible, infectious policy if it's just handled. But unfortunately, I don't see the Republican Party or the Democratic Party refocusing on where do we have leaders? You know, I think last time I talked about we're looking for puppets and uh, I didn't tell you when I ran for Congress and narrowly missed a chance to uh, uh, go after Colin Peterson and uh, uh, the editor from the Crookston Times when I narrowly lost said, boy, in a, a, a literature, uh, an editorial said, that would have really been interesting if you'd, uh, we had had a, a debate between Colin Peterson's uh, world of subsidies and no accountability, not understanding numbers, and Orepke coming forward uh, and putting the people on the spot. But what I'm getting at, and I'm not running for office because I can do far more if I ever get this little informed TV to the next level, where people of substance start listening to the fact that yes, we have the Rex Tillersons out there. Yes, we have the Mark Cubans out there that may have uh, some unordained way of talking, approaching things, just as Alan Repke has, but they're people of substance that we have to start looking at. And I didn't portray at that point in time the despicable Republican Party in the 7th Congressional District of Minnesota, when I approached them as a candidate, accepted all the guidelines by the state of Minnesota, approached the bench, so to speak, on a day-long, boring as dirt, boilerplate, uh, 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 congressional district meeting, that they wouldn't even give me five minutes to speak. And you know what that Republican Party did at that point in time? The chairman there with 140 delegates or something seated with their county signs up and all this political BS stuff called for the sergeant of arms to remove Mr. Repke from the building. And I turned with a smile on my face and I thought, what kind of dictatorial society am I in? Am I in uh, Khrushchev's Russia or am I in uh, Putin's Russia? But truly, I wasn't in America at that point in time. I, I, I turned to many of those delegates that way back to my old Republican days in my 20s, and by then also didn't tell you, my Renville County, when I was run out by the anti-abortionists, uh, never did go back to a Renville County Republican meeting ever after that. But anyway, this chairman at the 7th Congressional District in Moorhead, Minnesota, call for the sergeant of arms to remove Mr. Repke from the building. And I turned with a smile on a face that I looked at a bunch of people out there that I knew that I used to give money to. Uh, and here was uh, uh, the former uh, uh, speaker of the house. I can't think of his name. He was one of the seated delegates. Not one of them would call a point of order. What would be wrong this guy is an announced candidate. He's in a newspaper. Let him speak for five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. And anyway, so the sergeant of arms starts coming forward. So I, I want you to understand what kind of political regime we're under here in the 7th Congressional District in the state of Minnesota, and the Democrats aren't any different. Uh, here this guy comes towards me from the back of the room, and I had talked to him the night before, and in, in the morning he came over and talked to me. He said, boy, you're really an interesting guy. I can't wait to see what you have to say to this Republican Party. And he comes forward just sheepishly as the Dickens. What am I going to do? Do I have to manhandle this old man down? And he was actually smaller than me, so he maybe had just reason for that. But anyway, he's looking at me, and I just smiled at him and said, just leave me out of here. If, I'm, if I don't live in a democracy, there is no point in me to speak to a group of idiots in the first place. And I guess I didn't say that to anybody, but that was certainly my thought process and should be the thought process in election 2012 with the disastrous economics. And by the way, this was 2008, just prior to the blow up meltdown. You don't think I didn't see this coming? 
Of course I saw this coming. And that's why I ran at that point in time. That leadership had to step forward and somebody had to start talking common sense just like I did in sugar policy when the industry was flat on their back. There's a simple solution to everything if we just allow people of substance to speak when the idiots are causing chaos just like we're having in Greece, in Europe, in our own backyard, and across the nation. Thanks for listening to Inform TV. I'm Alan Repke.